is Bill Vinners from Artima and Escalate Software. And in this screencast, I'm going to talk about named and default parameters in Scala 2.8. Parameters always had names in Scala. If you defined a method, for example, let's say def f, and I wanted to give it a parameter, I had to give it a name. So we'll give this parameter the name size, say it's an int, and then I'll have the method, the function, just print out that passed size. Okay, and uh, the way you can invoke that method is just by specifying the value of size in parens. Now in Scala 2.8, an alternative way to invoke that method is to say the size parameter, uh, the value for that is, well, let's make it something else, 99. So that's new in Scala 2.8. That's not that useful when you have just one parameter, but when you have multiple parameters, it can become helpful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a case class and call it mnemonic, and I'm going to give this five parameters, all the same type string. So see if you can figure out uh, what's special about the names of these parameters. So the first one's E, the next one is G, the next one's B, the next one's D. Do you know what the last one is? F. Uh, what those are is those are the notes on a treble clef staff in a musical score. So if someone is learning to play the piano, for example, they're going to need to learn that the lines of that uh, treble clef are E, G, B, D, and F. And what uh, the piano teacher will sometimes do, especially if it's a young child learning to play the piano, is give them a mnemonic like, and the, the one that I've heard most often was every good boy does fine. Um, okay, so the problem here uh, is that I've got five parameters that are all the same type. If I actually get one of these out of order, like let's say I put fine in the wrong place, here you know it's a little easier to see it's in the wrong place because it sounds funny when you read it, but uh, in say you're passing a bunch of strings to uh, a templating engine that's going to render a web page or something, it can be not obvious that you've got them out of order and it's not a type error because all of those things are strings. Uh, if they were all different types, like one's a string, one's an int, one's a map, one's a list, one's a date, then if you get two of them out of order it would not compile. Um, but uh, it's not uncommon that you have a case like this where uh, getting things out of order is a, not a compiler error. Um, so in such a case it's actually helpful to be able to uh, well, let's actually, let's redo this one. This is one's out of order. If I put uh, the names next to each one, every G equals good, B equals boy, and I'm going to say F equals fine. When you, when you use name parameters, they don't have to be in order. That actually works fine. Look, every good boy does fine. Now everything's the way you want it. One other benefit of it uh, is, I mean, the, sort of the downside of this is it's more verbose, but um, if you do have a bunch of parameters to a method or a constructor invocation and they're just listed in order, you have to go look at the API documentation to see what order, what the order is and sort of draw lines to the, the values to figure out what's being passed as what. Whereas here it's explicit, you know, the, the G parameter is good. Okay. Now, another uh, benefit of named parameters, though, is that they work well in conjunction with default parameters. So I'm going to demonstrate what the problem was with uh, not having default parameters. Um, let's go back to creating this case class here. This case class is nice, but every time I create one, i got to specify every single string. And so what you'll see in a lot of APIs is, is uh, auxiliary constructors or overloaded methods that allow you to sort of leave off some of them. And in those cases, you get a default, right? So in this case, what I might do is say def this e, uh, well, I'll just copy it from up here. I'm going to copy the first four, say. Okay, I've got a auxiliary constructor that has four parameters and you can't pass the F here and in that case I'm going to just pass those four up and give a default of fine. Okay and so now I can uh, still create this mnemonic uh, the old-fashioned way um, 
every good boy does fine, but I can also leave off the fine, although in this case I need to create a new. If I want to leave off the new, i got to make an apply method in the uh, companion object for a mnemonic. So you can see that actually this is just one of them, and I may want to have five auxiliary constructors uh, so that they can even leave all of them off and uh, get every good boy does fine as the default. Um, so it's very verbose, and there's there's also a, a constraint in that uh, I can't say both an auxiliary constructor for leaving out uh, D and one for leaving out F because both of those are four strings, and to the you know type system that looks like uh, identical signatures, you can't overload. So um, there's a lot of problems with this approach of of just creating ad hoc constructors to, to make it convenient to create these things or call these methods. So what you can do with default parameters is is go back to this simple beautiful one-liner if I can find it, this guy, and um, for each one of these I'm just going to specify default. So let me go back and I'll start, to, I'll actually do it one on each line so it's easier for you to see it. E colon string equals every. Right. So that's when I'm Defining the class, I give it this default uh, g colon string equals good, g string equals good, b colon string equals boy, d colon string equals, and right now I'll bet you're saying fine because that's how you remember what's coming next, does, and f colon string equals fine. Okay. There. So now, uh, if I want to leave anything out, I can leave it out, as long as I specify everything else by name. So if I just say mnemonic and put nothing in there, I get every good boy just fine. I can say val m equals mnemonic and say b is boy, the kind that you see on lakes, and f equals float. So here you get every good boy does float. So I can I get every good and does by default, and I just specify boy and float. Okay, so one uh, final example of how this is uh, useful is that case classes in Scala 2.8 got a new method called copy. And the reason this method was uh, suddenly useful was because of named and default parameters. Um, when you have a case class like mnemonic, um, when you have an instance of it, sometimes you actually want to make a copy of it and just change one or two of the fields in it. What you can do now is uh, given an, an existing, uh, I'll say val in equals uh, mnemonic. Let's create one like that. So now I have um, every good boy does fine. And what I can do to create a different one is I can say in dot copy. In is a case class dot copy and b I'm going to change to bratwurst d I'm going to change to deserves and f I'm going to change to flattery and now what I have is a new mnemonic every good bratwurst deserves flattery so that uh, copy method is really useful and nice uh, nice uh, an illustration of, of how named and default parameters can make things a lot nicer